Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for waiting. I know you've all been uh, eagerly anticipating tonight's live. Thank you all for turning up early. And I do apologize about our late start. Technology and time zones and phew, everything um, got, got in the way of uh, an on-time start this evening. But we're here. And I think you all know why we're here. We're here to talk to Carol. We're here to hear Carol's story. Uh, we've got Josh and we've got Matt as well. And we'll get straight to that in just a minute. So I just want to thank everyone for their support. And I just want to make everyone know that this platform is letting everybody speak. We're not looking um, for anybody's input this evening. We're going to let Carol tell her story. And then um, depending on how Carol feels, we may do another evening where if you want questions answered, we can do that. But certainly we're going to stay on uh, Carol's story this evening. And yeah, I'm just waiting for this stream to connect on. Um, oh, it's good. I've already seen it. On you YouTube. got it. Yeah, yeah. So we're all, we're, 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 we're live and we're going through. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, awesome. Now, listen, if you guys can all leave a like on this, if you can share this, post it in uh, the various groups that are there, that would be awesome. And what I'll do now, without any further ado, is I'll bring the rest of our panel out and we can we can start our, our evening. So a few familiar faces. We've got Cap and Josh and, of course, Carol. So Welcome, Carol, and thank, thank you very you. much for uh, for coming this evening. And I know you've been it's, it's, you've been a little bit nervous. I think is probably the best way of putting it. And uh, I just want to say thank you from all of us for uh, for doing this. And you yeah. know, I, I, we'll just jump straight in because I know uh. these streams tend to run on, and I want I'd rather have as much Carol in this as possible. So yeah, uh, <laughs> so. Why don't we start at the beginning? Let's pretend that you and I, I have no idea who you are. Tell me who you are and how you fit into the McKinney Manor story. Well, my name is Carol and uh, Russ was my boyfriend and I lived in Arizona and he wooed me into moving to San Diego and I lived with him there for 15 years and we wow. started the boo haunt in the backyard and the rest is kind of history. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also knew him back in 1977 when we were seniors. We kind of dated. That's right. You, you met in high school and then you know, there was a school, period. And, college, and yeah. um, we worked together at Disneyland. Okay. And um, things were a lot different. So. It's, 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 um, it's quite contrasting imagining russ mckinney working at disneyland yeah right he i'll be honest with you with, like russ mckinney with the background in disney work it's it's quite a surprise if i'm being honest with you um but 15 years is a long time and i know that you're no um you you've not been exempt from russ mckinney's damaging touch throughout that 15 years and i know we are going to touch on that but we're going to, i want to build up a little more like when when you and Rust, how did the McKinney Manor, the idea of that, when was that born for 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 you and for Rust? Well, it it was a long time before me because even when he was on his military ship, he would have little haunts and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure at what point he started calling it McKinney, McKinney Manor. Manor. Um, I don't believe that it was a long time before I came there. He had like a very small walkthrough haunt through the backyard, sure. kind of silly. And um, when I got there, we just kind of blew it all up and we're constantly working in it and decorating it and going to yard sales and rummage sales and thrift shops, trying to find anything that would fit into this haunted attraction. Yeah. Now, Josh, I know you've got quite a good relationship with Carol. I know you've got quite a lot of knowledge on Carol's story. Um, with regards to the sort of beginning of Carol and Russ's relationship, is there anything that you want to bring in and touch on or ask Carol about that period? Um, like the, I guess kind of the stuff that people say about him, like the tendencies that a lot of people say that he had, um, the sociopathic type stuff as well. Was that any, was that showing at all back when you two first met? No, not in the very beginning. He was excellent at hiding what was going on in his noggin. Yeah. Um, but his ex-wives had warned me 
about it. And I'm like, oh, whatever, he's fine, you know? And then probably a year into it, it's like he couldn't hold it in anymore. And it hell began. I mean, and what was, what was the sort of first stages in, I guess, the main uh, He was obsessed with the guy who touched him when he was a kid. Okay. Um, he wanted me to go up to Orange County, which is up by Disneyland. Which it's about an hour and a half away. And he wanted me to go kill this guy for him. And if I didn't do that, then I must not love him. That right. kind of thing. And um, how, long, how, how insistent was that? Was that a one-time event? No. You to do that? No. 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 And then just a lot of OCD tendencies. Um, but I've never known that OCD directed on somebody else to do things repeatedly. Um, like going in and out of the front door 50, 60 times okay. before it was okay for him to let me in the house. Um, if I was- and these, were these actual occurrences? Yes, yeah. daily, okay. daily. Daily? For 15 and, years? Yes. And that was his OCD? Yes, not my. I don't have OCD. Yeah, you don't have OCD, so you're you're having to do 50, 60 entries just to appease. What was that's, the? What that's was just the getting into. The, that's just getting into the house. What was the result of you not conforming to that? Oh, anger. Uh, you don't care. You don't love me. You don't take care of me. Um, and then he would get really mad. He would storm out of the house and be gone for hours in his truck. He would go to the movies and watch movie after movie, like bounce from theater to theater. And then he would come back like one or two o'clock in the morning. But it also started out when he would take off like that. If I didn't go look for him, that was even worse. Cause then I didn't care again. So spent a lot of hours driving down to the movie theater you know, yeah, it's multiple layers of control and cameras. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Well, and then, like, if I went to functions, like I went to a Greyhound function and I took his movie camera because I wanted to film the doggies. Yeah. Uh, we were at a reunion kind of thing, not for Operation Greyhound, but we were at a reunion because somebody had lost one of their Greyhounds. They had just gotten it, it had gotten out, and a whole bunch of us went searching the hills for this dog. So yeah. at, the, at the one year reunion, we all got back together and he kept calling me at this function saying that if I didn't come home immediately with the camera, he was going to call the police and have me arrested for stealing it. Just stuff like that all the time. And, all the time. I mean, that, that just sounds so like as if your entire life is in a box. My entire life was walking on eggshells because he could find something wrong with anything that I said or did. And then when he got into texting and videoing all these girls, if I tried to take the phone away from him because I was now, so sick of it, then he would touch, ask them to call the police too. Before we touch on the other girls, right? Because yeah. you talk, I heard you talk about that um, with Josh about how he'd be online and talk, I mean, how, um, how long did that go on for? Was that, or do you feel like it was always there? And at one point, he admitted no. it. When he got famous, okay. When this, especially when this movie was going to be made, uh, well, maybe making monsters, on you know, maybe started it. But when his ego just went crazy, and okay. any woman who contacted him was like his instant girlfriend. He could have he could have a dozen of them at a time, okay. And it was just constant skyping. And now his office backed up to the bedroom, and so I'm sitting in bed, and I can hear every single word, and it's so hurtful and destructive of it is. to of me. It is. It's, and it's, if I would go in there and ask him to stop, he would scream at me. He would stop the camera. He would scream at me. Um, and then if I started to cry, he would chase me with his camera and say, see how she is? See it? Look at, look at, you know, just, I, I wasn't even allowed to cry for what was happening to our relationship. He just thought it was a big joke. Yeah, that's, 
it's overwhelming the multiple layers of abuse and control and again it whether it stems from his mental health or not it just seems that every time we peel back another layer there's another a form of control and abuse that he's dishing out in every possible angle like if you're lying in your bed listening to your partner talking in that way to someone else on skype it must further just back up a cell uh, he must have re removed the self the, your self-worth and your ability to i don't know i mean I'm, I'm not saying the ability to stand up for yourself but certainly you can't stand up for yourself you're not allowed to say anything it's his way or no way you can't you can't because then you're a monster for saying something or you're a, you're a horrible pe a person you're you know it just every every day and i can't say that for probably five years i will just say i think there is not one single day that he did not make me cry wow so I'm i mean when i saw what I'm he did i saw what he did to Lindsay. i actually had like her blocked out a lot of stuff because um he had me do the disciplining of her he wouldn't do it he would tell me what he wanted me to say then when i'd say it he'd be mad at me Lindsay would be crying and you know i it was a nightmare this a living nightmare every single day if, and if I didn't do what he wanted, like work on the hunt, if I wasn't out there at 11, 12 o'clock at night working on the hunt, I wasn't passionate enough. I wasn't this, I wasn't that. And it gets really destructive. And did you, like, was the, the level of control and the level of <sighs> aggression, did you ever feel like if you didn't comply, you were in serious, legitimate danger? Did you ever feel every like day. Every you day. could just... And, uh, I mean, like, like Holly said, you know, he threatened uh, he was going to go buy a gun and he was going to kill me. He said that to me several times. And if I didn't do what he wanted me to do, then the suicide threats would come in. He, and he actually did that one time in front of Lindsay and expected her as a, I don't know, seven or eight year old to comfort him and get him out of the suicide mode. And other times he would run into the garage and the garage was part of the haunt and he would get up on a ladder and fake that he was going to hang, hang himself to see if I would get him down. And if I, you know, if I didn't, then I was in trouble. Do you, do know? you feel there's like a, at any point, do you feel that he is trying to be regardless of it's, obviously it's all negative but different extremes of negative where he just wants to be the focal point he's it's always all, the focal point it has it, to be it's all about russ everything is about russ everything every single second of the day you know and how would, how and he would, would have to i feel that he would go out of his way to ruin anything that was about me or special to me or you know, like when my mother was passing away, I had to, I had power of attorney. I had to fly to Seattle and I'm trying to pack and I'm freaking out because my mom had never been sick a day in her life. Gosh. And all of a sudden she's on life support at a hospital that you never get out of. So I'm freaking out. I'm trying to pack. And he's like, well, you've got to pick up my clothes for tomorrow. And I'm like, what? I, I don't give a shit what you wear tomorrow, you know? But I had to line that all up for him. And uh, when my father passed away four months later, five months later, he said to me, he wouldn't answer the phone. Again, I'm up in Seattle. He wouldn't answer the phone. And I called and called and called because I was just desperate to talk to him. I mean, two parents in five months is huge. Yeah. And he, he said to me, he goes, oh, I needed a little vacation from you. Well, who does that when you're at a funeral? Who do you does think, that? Do you think that Russ, in the same way as you and I and everyone that's watching, do you think he's capable of genuine love for no. someone? No, because, well, let me finish the funeral thing because... Sure. 
Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. I, I need to smoke. I'm just turning off my camera. I'm still here. I'm just, I'm just, I'm still here. Just so you know. Oh, he <laughs> said when I got, um, when I got back, he goes, well, I hate to say, tell you what I'm thinking. And I'm like, well, what are you thinking? And he goes, well, I'm glad that your parents died because now you're going to get an inheritance and I'll have money to pay off my bills. Wow. Wow. Just straight in with that. Just straight yep. in with where's the check. Yep. Yep. So I spent on his promise, I paid $100,000 to pay off his second mortgage because we were struggling financially because he has no filter on what's being spent. It's just, you know, I had to tell him multiple times, you can't okay. buy that prop. We can't afford it. Um, I put $100,000 paid off the second mortgage. He promised me he would pay me back. Promised me over and over and over. And Where did you see that promise being held up from? Where was Russ's income to pay back $100,000? Um, well, uh, supposedly, well, he, he has like almost, or, or more now, he had $425,000 in his retirement account. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Yeah. Cough so, up the hundred K, Russ. Cough it up. So it's not it's not like Russ's money is our money. Russ's money is Russ's money, and my money was Russ's wow. money. Wow. So Wow. I tell you now. Like I paid for his attorney, his custody attorney. I paid so many bills, it's ridiculous. I'm telling you now, this this whole story, this whole saga, better not end with Russ McKinney sitting in the Bahamas with four hundred thousand dollars, living out his fucking grave. Well, his, it's, his it's not just that. I mean, he got all of the proceeds from the sale of the house, and technically, I'm entitled to half of that. He has all of that too, so I'm guessing that's around another three hundred thousand oh, dollars. Fuck. So if that's true, if that's true, if Ross, if, if Ross McKinney's sitting on a, on a sweet half mil, right? Yep. He's not going to give a flying mm -hmm. fuck what people say about him on the internet. He's going to ride this fame out until he can just disappear yep. like Kaiser Soze. Like, he, he also promised me that when I moved here, he would buy me a new septic system. That never happened. And that he would never leave me hanging financially. Well, I'm hanging. I am. Th that is... Uh, oh man! If they anyone knows any lawyers, right, who knows anything about this kind of law, right, with long-term relationships and finances and how to get Carol her fucking money, please contact us because surely that's an easy win for anyone who's a lawyer, man. Okay, there's got to be paper trails for 100k. Okay, has to be. So, hey, do you care if I ask her a quick question, real quick? Please, please do. Um, okay. So if Russ has all this retirement money, why, why is the 20 K allegedly so fake? And why is he living in some bum ass trailer in Tennessee? Because he's not going, he's not going to give out any money. His money is his money. That's it. And if you looked at that money, you could see on it that it said for movie use only it's fake money. Yeah. yeah that was a cracker. So, I mean, that was, let's just say if Russ's lips are moving, it's a lie. But unfortunately, I didn't learn that until I was almost gone, you know. It, so it's, I guess as for the trailer, it's probably just because he's a gross fucking bastard anyways, right? Well, he is a pretty dirty guy. He doesn't shower. He doesn't brush his teeth. Wow. All kinds of things. So... He's gross. He's a dirty. He's a dirty boy. He's a dirty boy. Yeah. Uh, damn. Well, let me just. Uh, let me just well, I mean, look at his videos. He's wearing the same damn shirt every day. Yeah, we've we've seen a few people on YouTube that like to wear the same shirt every day that we've covered on this channel. It seems to be a, an interesting uh, side effect. It's of a trend. People. Yeah, it's a trend. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, now, I know. There's been a lot of discussion about uh, Russ's mental health and about how um, we want to get him help and, oh, we, we, we want to push for this. Have, has there been any history of Russ ever seeking any form of mental help? Yes. Well, first of all, he was in a mental institution when he was younger. Um, Lindsay had said that she 
she had heard it was six weeks. I believe it was way longer than that. Okay. Um, I think it even went into high school. Um, okay. But I'm not, I'm not positive. Maybe possibly as a freshman. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I would, he would actually ask me to find him help. And it's really hard because you have to go through the military network and it's limited. It's very limited on who okay. you can see. Yeah. So let's just say we exhausted everybody because he wouldn't go see a man. It had to be a woman and we would go and it had to be a woman. Did you just say? Yes. It had to be a female. So, um, that will stem from his control. That will stem from his, if you've only got a man or a woman to choose from, which does he think he can control the better of the two? Well, every single session would end up with him blaming me for everything. And I don't know how many times I got up at a session and said, if you believe the shit he's telling you, then I want nothing to do with this. And I would walk out of walk out of sessions but surely they, they'll have had a list of pre-existing mental health diagnosis and all this kind of stuff was it is it just i, I, I can't go to somebody once maybe twice and then never go back and they would want him to take medication and he finally like probably six or seven years into it he decided to try something and i think he tried it for maybe a week and then that was the end of that so yeah no that's that's crazy. And I think a lot of people, I mean, I never had any, um, you know, m major prior knowledge of um, Russ trying to seek any help or anything like that. And I don't know if anybody else did or if that was common knowledge. But for me to hear that he would only talk to a woman, you know, yeah. and he said he wasn't comfortable talking to a man about his issues. And so. did he ever? And then when Lindsay Lindsay went to get a little bit of therapy because she was having problems with him, and he was just out in the lobby, livid that it was a man. So, I I don't I don't understand. I think if you want help and you seek help, it shouldn't matter who you're talking to. Well, you've got to remember if you've only got two options, whether it's man or woman or black or white, that is a very restricted amount of control that Russ can have on that situation. There's not multiple options. So his anger stems from Russ has decided everyone has to see a woman. And if you step outside of his commands, he's going to kick off. It's a repeating pattern, Carol. It's just, yeah, I know. it's constant. It's, it's unreal. And I can't, I mean, is there anything else you want to touch on with regards to, to Russ and your time with him and how you've observed your time without him and is de have oh you seen steady, is, it, is it a steady decline of mental health or is it period of his life where he's okay and then he's down then he's okay and then he's down or is it just i don't think he's ever okay okay I mean, he would control everything from me walking in and out of the door uh, bringing groceries home what tv i could watch i wasn't allowed to watch i basically watched the cooking channel because he, you know, I couldn't watch okay. mo movies. He just controlled every aspect of my life. Like, and I had to cook him dinner every night and he wouldn't come into the kitchen and get it. I had to serve it to him. And sometimes I'd have to walk in and out of the living room to serve him his dinner 20, 30 times. No, so it's just. With, it's, with it's, his dinner, with his dinner in your hand, in and yes, out 20, 30 times. Yes, yes. Uh, so in 15 years, Russ never did a single chore, never did laundry, never cooked, never ran errands, never cleaned, nothing. But he was able to work on the haunt. That was fine. He could do that. But nothing to help me. Oh, I, looks I ran his businesses. I dealt with all of his brides on his DJ business. I even had to go out to venues and set it up for him. Yeah, tell me, just just briefly touch on Russ's other businesses. There was something to do with wedding planning or something like this. I heard. Right, he's a DJ. He would do a lot of do a lot of weddings at a particular. He venue. must have showered before the DJ gigs. Yes, he, yes. he did. Yeah, so that public persona. But then he didn't want to do those anymore because okay. it was too much work. Okay. But I mean, when you're making that kind of money, because it, I mean, he was making one hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour. But he didn't want to do them anymore because it was too much work.
So that comes to the van, the red van. I bought the red van. Okay. Yeah, touch on the van because, again, Ron I bought the red van yeah. for his DJ business because loading everything into his little Ford pickup was a nightmare. Okay. And, I mean, living, lifting that equipment was crazy. So I bought that van off of eBay, actually. Okay. Um, and I had a lift put in it so that he wouldn't have to lift anything ever again. That sounds very nice of you, you know, yeah. like very thoughtful. You know, yeah. it, did you yeah. ever feel like that, that was ever returned, that thought? No. That thoughtfulness? No. Okay. Of course not. So then when he stopped doing weddings, which I couldn't understand because I'm not making $125 an hour and I'm working my ass off all the time and at home and at night. And he would wake me up at night to get up and do more stuff because stuff wasn't getting done to his satisfaction. Um, the van became the haunt and he just freaking destroyed it. Oh, he man. destroyed the inside of that van. It's it's here with me sitting out in the yard. It smells like vomit still three years later. And is it just sitting there doing nothing? I'm sure you would be able yep. to reclaim some of your money uh, selling that as a weird McKinney Man or relic to some crazy yeah. fan. I'm well, sure. I kind of hang make, on to it in case I ever need also. to. Like, don't, 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 don't meet that person yourself. Josh will, we'll get Josh to like <laughs> talk somewhere. <laughs> I actually kind of keep the van because it's the best way to transport all of the animals. And, you know, if we've had a lot of flooding here and if I had to leave, then I've got an exit vehicle. Yeah. You got your bug out vehicle for sure. Yeah, yeah. So. Now, so can I sneak a question in real quick? Please do. Like, it's kind of in regards. Um, so I don't know if a lot of people have heard this. I think we've talked about this before, like on um, privately, but um, what was there like a specific something or what was the reasoning of going from like a kitty boo hunt to what it turned into? Like, how did I, that happen? I actually don't know. He wanted the hunt to seem longer at one point and he would like kidnap them and drive them around, but we're still not at the beat down stage. So I'm okay with him driving it around driving them around. Then he started putting freezers in them with water in them and all this other stuff. And, you know, for all those of you who have gone through the hunt, he never changed the water in that. So you guys all peed in it and vomited in it. And you guys are just stepping into it from the next. Oh. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. That sounds lovely. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and then that's, we that's the hopefully they shower. Let's hope yeah. you never have to bug out in that vehicle. Well, <laughs> Some of the actors and old participants came over and spent the entire day cleaning it out and getting his crap out of it. But they literally had to hose down the interior of the van. Oh, man. It still stinks. Yeah, do a controlled burn on the inside of that carol. That's yeah. the only way to rid it of its sins. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awful. So. And now, just because... I'm learning as I go. I've heard a lot of things about this van, right? And how it was used in the haunt and how things went on there. I don't know. Can you shed any light on that? Is that something that is you, you're able to talk about or is that just more of the mythology or is it different from person to person? Or well, it's different. It's different from person to person, but he used the van to drive them to different you know, locations. There are no other locations, just like there are no other locations now. His little story about Al Alabama property being sold, that's not true. He doesn't have a venue in Alabama. He didn't have other venues in California. He would drive them around to grocery stores and other warehouses and park behind them and say, okay, we're at the other location. He'd have them get out and they're standing behind this big building. They're like, oh yeah, well, we're at another venue. We're not. Yeah. We're at the grocery store. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, yeah. Creating the illusion. Um, and he would drive them around the block and drive them and drive them. And it's just, it was sometimes they'd end up in a sewer runoff at the end of our street. It's just a gross rainwater runoff. It's nasty. It reeks down there. Looks pretty cool, but no way yeah. that I get in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from a from a from a safety point of view. Now, there's a couple of things I'd, I'd like to ask. Now, we've touched on this with with other people that have been on. I just wanted to confirm it with yourself. So, 
was there ever any insurance or safe trained safety people for medical injuries or possible deaths or anything like that? Um, well, first of all, there have never been any deaths. I'm just going by the waiver, Carol. I know, I'm, but he had this rumor out there that somebody died from a heart attack. That yeah. is not. That is not. No, true. I, I I think that if anyone had died, we would know about it. It would be all. Yeah. Over. I think. So actually, our homeowners insurance covered the backyard haunt for a while, okay. and then um, they're like, uh, "No, we're not going to cover that. What you're doing, we're not okay with that. We're not. We're not covering it anymore." Okay. And so. Um, he investigated getting haunters insurance, which they really didn't want to do it at a house either. I think at one point he found somebody who would charge him for it, but it was excruciatingly high. Yeah. So he started a GoFundMe to pay for the insurance, but he never bought the insurance and people put money into that and totally got screwed by him. Wow. And because it was their his promise that they would be the head of the line in the haunt, and you know, I feel really bad that they contributed that money. That is something but that I'm also grateful that they didn't get to go through because it would be another another torture event. I did not like the torture thing. I did not participate in it. I hated what he was doing. I absolutely hated it. Uh, you know, there's some participants that. He won't even put their videos out or say that they went or whatever. I mean, that's bullshit. I mean, he beat the living shit out of Laura Brotherton. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get we'll get to some of the more extreme cases, but the I just want to ask another couple of questions. The was there ever any drugging? The mythology of this drugging that went on was that um, was there ever any realities in that? No, he didn't drug anybody. It was uh, retractable needles. Um, yeah. He would give them pills, but they were actually Tic Tacs. Yeah. You know, it's all the power of suggestion. Yeah. He's got them so scared that they actually think that they are. Yeah. Listen, I um, I completely understand how powerful the mind is and perception and all of that. So, yeah, that was a, it's a big common question. So I just wanted to throw that one in there. Now, the, the last one I'm going to ask you is the the famous Vegas live stream, Carol, this super duper live stream to Vegas. I mean, everyone's been saying it is just poppycock. Um, would you would you would you confirm this for us? Yeah, there's no there's no Vegas. I mean, he couldn't have couldn't have possibly have done that. He wasn't licensed to have any of that. It was all f completely fake. He put cameras up in the haunt that are battery operated. They look yeah. like security cameras, but they're not. Um, can, I, can, I just have, can I have permission to use whoever just walked through your door's face on the internet? Is that okay? Uh, the, yeah. the gentleman that just walked. No, it's, like, it's my neighbor's kit or my roommate's kit. All right. Well, as long as we were, we're okay to put his face on the internet, we're, oh, we're, yeah, we're, we're fine. fine. Yeah. Um, so, I, excuse me, I did give my best brave heart last night. Thank you very much. Whoever just said, I never gave my best brave heart, go watch the end of the stream last night. I gave you the brave heart. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you there, Carol. What's the brave heart? Can I vouch heart? for that? Well, quenching some tea there before we start getting in. Somebody uh, done a super chat last night and asked me to give my best brave heart impression at the end of the stream. And uh, I almost forgot about it, but my missus shouted through and uh, told me to, to do it. And I did it. Okay. It's, uh, it was the speech from Braveheart, the movie yeah. with uh, Mel Gibson. So that's been done now. That's been done now. So there's no need to ask for it again. It's on the internet. Okay. I need your, I need your Gordon Ramsay impression. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get to that, Carol. All right, we'll get to that. <laughs> I <I'm> fucking shit. <laughs> your payment. The fry ban. My, my Ramsey impressions. Uh, I just want to say as well. I think Lindsay's out in the side chat, so just hello to Lindsay and uh, thanks for for coming and watching and joining us again. Well, she can come on if she wants to. Yeah, she, Lindsay knows she's always welcome. Uh, Cap, you can jump on uh, jump on that. I don't know if Lindsay might be working, but she knows she's always welcome here. So we've crushed some of the myths, retractable needles, 
In fact, let me just let me just have a little rant here. Hang on a second. Okay, so we've covered some of the myths. We've talked about the retractable needles. We've touched on this the van, which was interesting to me because again, I'm a noob coming into this. Um, you know, we're we're still touching on the the severe mental health side of Russ, and it's interesting to hear that he has uh, seeked help before, and the fact that there is free help available via his um, military pension and his naval background, and that wasn't something that we highlighted previously. That I think is quite a big chunk of information for me, anyway, to find out. Um, so. Yeah, we'll get back to Carol and uh, Josh. Have you got anything else you wanna you wanna throw in just before I kind of move into the next part of this? Just to let you know, uh, Lindsay's gonna jump on uh, for a minute or two. I'm just uh, oh, yeah. on Discord. Good. Yeah. That's, That's great. pretty cool. Yeah. See. Awesome. 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 Um, so yeah, Josh, is there anything you want to touch on on the sort of? In fact, I tell you what, Carol. Why don't we we ask you when you felt like the peak. Of there must have been a moment where it all got too much, and you decided mentally this is when you were going to start freeing yourself, or was it? Well, I wanted to free myself for a long time, but when some certain individual has all of your money, how do you leave? Okay, so how many years do you? When was there a moment? Was there a was there an act or an event that triggered the it's time to leave process? Not the I'm leaving right now, but the well, there's. I'm Several, there were several triggers. The $1,500 that he spent in one month on a dating website that he took out of another account that I wasn't supposed to know about. And okay, then I, how, how, how do you spend $15,000 on a dating website? $1,500. $1,500. How do you spend $1,500? What, what, what? Yeah, because what? you have to buy like coins to talk to women. Ah. Uh, uh. So he's just buying, 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 buying. And talking to these women all the time, and uh, he was okay. doing it. He was doing it at work too, because then I couldn't hear or see what he was doing. So, um, I, you know, how, how many I, years? I think that I think when he started moving stuff here, he came here maybe eight or ten times. He brought props here and crates all of my parents belongings his things i mean when i moved here the house was just stuffed full it was out in the yard it was rotting out in the yard because i didn't move for and when i moved here the another house five years after i um started uh, moving, started lindsay, moving stuff for, for feed cap huh? sorry can you just ask Lindsay just to mute her? Uh, there we go. She's got it. She's got it. She's muted. She did it. She's there. Hi, uh, welcome, Lindsay. Thank you for coming back <laughs> and joining us. Um, what I'm going to do, Cap, is if you can, if you and Josh just uh, keep this going, I'm just nipping downstairs. I think I hear uh, Nora. So just keep everybody introduced. Nora. Uh, Nora. Nora. <laughs> it's uh, my 10 week old little girl who is just, uh, honest to God, her cuteness surpasses all known realms of cuteness. Uh, so I'll try and be as quick as I can, but I need to go and just make sure she's okay. We so, want to hear. Uh, uh, honestly, I'll, I'll, when we're offline, I'll give you uh, a, a private Nora screen. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, just, I would not do that public. <laughs> no, no. no. no, no I, I keep, I, I, don't get me wrong. I've There's little snippets here and there of her, but I keep it fairly locked down. But the the community, they're they're awesome. They they're many members of the community are like family. I'm on a lot of video calls every day, so there's a lot of intertwined members. But Lindsay, just for the sake of people who've been living under a rock for like the last week, okay, um, just introduce yourself again and let everybody know who you are. And uh, I will be back in a moment. Hi, friends. <laughs> um, I'm Lindsay, and I'm Russ's daughter. LOL. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. that. That's that's that. that. <laughs> so I guess this is probably you guys' is like first face-to-face -face in a while, right? From what I've heard. We've talked on the phone. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I've, I've seen her online, but I haven't spoken to her where I can see her, so... And I'm working on that thing for you, Lindsay, down in the basement. So okay, thanks. Looking for. I don't think it's. 
That's okay. Yeah. At any way. I'm like frozen right now. I'm like I'm just trying to think of what to ask. <laughs> well, um, um, okay. Let's turn it over. If you don't have nothing, now I'll just wing it. Oh, Josh, yeah. If you have questions, because I know you, you've been you've been pretty good with the questions. <laughs> um. Well, Lindsay, I don't know you, so hello. Um. It's yeah, very nice to meet you. you. And thank you for you coming out here. I don't I don't know how in the world you found us. I mean, I. But that's pretty awesome that you found the stream and everything. And um. Yeah, my is there, like, um. Oh, my my mom started noticing um, interviews happening, and and she kept sending them to me um, just because <laughs> out, out of pure curiosity. Because when you're, when, it's just all of this is so crazy. And so my mom was like, "No, this person's talking. This person's talking. This is so amazing. Everyone's being, you know, finally telling their truth and all that." So, um, and then I just really just like after hearing Holly's story, I just was like, I feel like. I deserve to have a, 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 a platform to talk about this too. Cause I don't talk about it with anyone. No, I mean, only like, only like the closest people in my life. Nobody knows that I'm a McCamey. I do. That's not something I'm proud of. Um, it's not something I talk about. Um, so I just felt like, you know what, after eight years, um, I know I said 10 before I was rounding up. It's been eight years cause I was 13 when I left and now I'm 21. Um, but after eight years of like, working on this and figuring out all of my <laughs> bullshit, I feel like I can finally talk about it um, without breaking down. So that's, um, and that's amazing. What I want to do. What all, I want to do. All, all of, uh, all of you, the, the people that Russ has had in his inner circle, I keep saying this, are, are all of these are brave for coming forward, especially the, with the, the fear instilled in your, your, your mindset with your experiences. And, you know, it was really, you, Lindsay, that brought the the severity of the mental health forward. I know Carol was super keen to to, to just back that up, the the severity of Russ's mental health. And you know, we, we're we're taking steps forwards behind the scenes to bring some people together, and we want to really discuss that a little bit more. And you know, there's the survivor aspect when we look at Carol and Holly and Lindsay that entwines with this, that I think millions of people are currently going through what you went through, you know, and I want to maybe get you guys on a show where we can offer access to support. We'll get some links together and things like this and really focus on the areas where we can make a bit of difference for people who haven't managed to free themselves from similar situations. And I, I feel like um, psychological and mental um, abuse is not really talked about as much as sexual and physical abuse is talked about in, um, in media and all of that. So, I mean, I was, that's something that my close friend who just, I was just talking to brought up is she was like, if anything that could come out of this, cause I was talking to her about, it, I feel like it's weird, you know, putting all of our family's dirty laundry out there. But then she was like, but you're not because it's, you could, if you can help another little girl who's scared and yeah. struggling and confused because nobody talks about this kind of abuse it, this thoroughly. Um, it's really confusing um, for anyone who hasn't personally experienced. And that's why explaining uh, this situation is so difficult and why a lot of people are hearing um, maybe uh, different stories here and there because we all have our own story. I mean, this man is extremely sick and we've all experienced our own individual trauma with him. Um, right. So it, it's, all a, it's all a unique perspective, but I do think that if we can help any woman or person who's in an abusive relationship or in an abusive situation. Like I was talking to um, uh, Creep Child, Child Creep, Creep Child. Yeah, creep child yeah. And I said, like, when I talk about this stuff, um, I just think about when I was six and I just think about six year old Lindsay and how badly I just. Um, There's a lot of six year old Lindsay's out there. I just I'm wish sorry. I had someone to, to, other than like my mom. <laughs> um, um, and a lot of times I wasn't allowed to talk to her when I was at my dad's house, uh, like on the phone or anything. So I just wish I had someone who could have someone. He would take your phone away, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would hide hide the phones and take my phone away because he knew I was going to call my mom and cry. And um, So maybe if it's all right with Lindsay and Carol, since we've got you both here, we could focus <laughs> on the period of your lives where you guys – where all three of you were together, you, Russ, and Carol, Lindsay, um, if there's any sort of events you want to discuss or if there's anything that, you know, you just want to 
you know, from that time period that's not been discussed that you want to put out there, um, feel free well, to do it. When I talked to Lindsay after or before the show, I'm not sure which what which it was. Um, I dreaded dinner time. You know, I would I would make dinner, and when I was a child, my dad would always discipline us when we were eating, and it makes you sick. It literally makes you sick. And Russ would always choose that time period to discipline Lindsay. And did he know that your previous experience with your father was that just coincidental? That was just coincidental. Okay. So I mean, I think I think my dad my dad knew when it was um his time when it, when I was when when you're um what's the word when you're vulnerable and when you're eating yeah. it's pretty vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and would get up and run to the bathroom, and then he'd be like, "Go get her." I'm like, oh, oh my God. God. Well, because I would be throwing up. I mean, when you're in, I mean, this is kind of how I tried it when I, how I explained it to my therapists. Um, when you're in constant panic, so I would constantly be in a fight or flight mode in my head, like okay. shaking, nauseous, getting picked up from school if it was a Monday or if it was my dad's weekend was truly breakdowns in the bathroom couldn't make it into couldn't make it in class without having to leave because I was having a panic attack begging my mom to find some reason for her to have me that Monday night like tr it was just awful um a big thing that would happen I mean I couldn't eat really for like five years because I was constant when you're really really panicked when your heart is really pounding and you're really stressed keeping down food is really difficult I remember there was even one time my dad asked me or he made Carol ask me I think if I thought I was fat if I thought I had an eating disorder when I was like seven or eight. And I was like, yeah, it was him. That was him. yeah, it was like, no, it has nothing to do with that. It's I'm, I'm in constant terror. And when you're constantly scared, you can't keep food down. Yeah. Um, so even now I have a, I mean, I, I, I love food. Food is amazing, but when I'm stressed, I can't eat. I can't eat even the slightest stress. I can't eat all throw up. So yeah, um, I think that'll be a, a, like a trigger from everything you went through. Yeah. 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 So, you know, there's a lot of little triggers, just little specific things. But I mean, even now, if I'm, if anyone ever tells me or asks me, like, I need to talk to you or we need to have a conversation, holy shit, I could vomit. I could poop my yeah. pants out of my chair because every time I'd get in the car and I'd be picked up, Carol would say, dad wants to talk to you and you get home. Fuck. Yeah. That means the night is over. The night is it's over. over before you even got home. So, I mean, there are little things in my day-to-day -day life, even now, eight years later. I mean, my boyfriend, God bless his heart, has to deal with my anxiety and has to word things differently for me because I will be, I'm so easily triggered by everything. I mean, my relationships are impossible to maneuver. Um, luckily, well, I'm with- Like your mother, she doesn't have a relationship. After no, she hasn't been with someone. I will never have a relationship after yeah. that. No People way. are always asking, always asking my mom, like, why didn't you get back out there? And my mom's always like, it, no. No, I'm destroyed. I am a broken human being. I have nothing to offer another person, let alone you think, a man. You think your mom would come online here? Um, no, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no. I was actually saying yesterday, I did a, I did like a, a Q and a with um, a couple of the girls on here. Um, and I'd mentioned that Russell, my brother, Russell, Maddie, who they're now they're engaged. I don't know if you know that, Carol. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I knew he was engaged, but I didn't know to who. To Maddie. Okay. Fucking Maddie from, from high school, high school sweethearts. Um, right. awesome. They're engaged. Um, my mom and his mom were all celebrating Thanksgiving together where he lives. And I was like, you know what? If we all have enough glasses of wine, we may be like, let's get on there and talk yeah. about this. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> But um, that would be. We'll, we'll see. But epic. sober. I think I'm sending bottles of wine. Yeah, I think. Oh, I was please do. I love yeah. wine. Where Where do like, we ship I don't, this wine to? I, I don't. I don't know if I'm sober. Linda would be down, but I, I could get her a few glasses of wine, <laughs> and then we'll see. Well, listen. That can literally be arranged within about 20 minutes of you contacting <laughs> one of us. So just, okay. Just great. Great. That. Great. Um, great. Well, tell your mom that after I left. I wanted to call her and tell her you were right because she warned me about him. And I was like, oh, no, you're not. Oh, yeah, she was. And then some. So I should have listened to your mother. 
we all should have listened to our moms. Am I right, guys? Yeah. Listen yeah. to your mothers. Oh, we should all listen to our mothers. But even my mom, my mo I was on the phone with my mom yesterday, and she had listened to your interview, Carol, and she was like, he's gotten worse. Oh, yeah. And she, she was like, I don't even, like, I thought what I experienced was bad. And, and she was like, I can't even imagine what Carol was put the through. I mean, that pressure, is the pressure and the stress of doing all the things that he wanted me to do and say, even you, Lindsay, was so overwhelming. And I, I don't even know how to describe it. It literally make me sick. And like, when I mean, I Carol was essentially a single mom because my dad made her take care of everything when it came to me. I mean, she paid my child's, my mom's child support. She paid for my clothes. She took me to school every day. She made me food every day. My dad didn't do any parenting there except for, you know, disciplinary um, in his own way. But even then he would make Carol do the half of it. So, I mean, she was not only in charge of every single thing in that house and making sure everything got done, but also she had to be a mom to this kid and she's just, and also a kid who's extremely emotionally tainted because of what her childhood has been like. And so she has this kid who like does weird things and says weird things and is emotional and crying all the time and hates doing everything. And she's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Help me, my partner, help me. There is no helping, you know? I mean, I, it's so crazy what he expected of, of you. Like you're a human being and not once I mean, were you ever my, treated like a human being. My biggest nightmare with you was, Taekwondo mm -hmm. and making you go and making you because I knew that if you didn't go and you didn't do what you're supposed to do in class, it was my ass, not yours. Yeah. Mine. Did you, and, did you, uh, Lindsay, feel like Carol was used as the messenger for discipline and bad news and things like this? Carol was sort of touching on something like that earlier. I mean, I didn't know in the moment. I I, no. I, I, yeah, I didn't figure that out until a few years ago as an adult. But in the moment, I just thought, she's just an asshole. Yeah, well, <laughs> you were, you in the were. moment, I was like, I was like, you, you both were. suck. <laughs> like, like truly, I, I mean, when we would have our moments, like Carol and I would have our moments where if dad wasn't around, it got, remember how ha how happy we were when dad had yep. was gone yep. for a Saturday because he had a show? Yep. It was like <clears throat> just us and we would watch TLC. We would watch, Whatever. you know, we, we would hang out with the dogs and watch rom-coms yep. and make food. And it was amazing. We had no issues. So, you know, it was when dad was away was just the best. The best. Yep. And it um, still is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, it's great. But um, when I moved here and I walked in the door. I actually didn't know what to do because I started crying. I didn't have to go in and out of the door 40, 50 times. I'm like, yeah. this is awesome. And when I fled and um, with the help of Angel, she drove one of my vehicles and I drove the other vehicle. We had nine Greyhounds. Um, I said, we have, I to get, we have to get into Arizona. I have to get... I don't want him coming after me. And I got to the first motel in Yuma and I started vomiting and I don't remember driving here. It was just throwing up the entire way. I was in shock. I was in fear. Angel got pulled over for uh, tailgating. And when the police pulled her over, I was just freaking out because I thought, Oh God, I'm screwed. I've been, you know, he's caught yeah. me. I was, uh, I don't remember the trip here, basically. A, a few things here and there, but I mean, it, it was just go, go, go as much as we could. It was snowing. It was windy. It was, we were all over the road. I was just scared out of my wits. I, I wonder, could you touch on what finally made you leave? Like, was there a certain situation that happened that made you be like, fuck this, I'm out? Well, uh, I didn't have any way to go because I wasn't going to leave the dogs with him. I wasn't going to let Holly touch the dogs. Th those are like my children. And you know that. Yeah. They're my kids. I know. I, know. I, know. They're my, I mean, they're everything to me. And here comes Holly. She's going to move in after three days. And I'm like, fuck no. And I don't want her in this house because everything is my mom's. And Lindsay, you don't know that, but 
I, you know, my mom was going to move into the house in San Diego and she started oh. shipping her stuff to the house. And we were going to put my dad in a convalescent home in California um, so that I could help. And then she passed away the day things started arriving in San Diego. Oh. So all of the China, everything was my mother's. And I'm not going to let Holly touch that. That's, that's yeah. my personal, my personal being, my experience. I don't want her involved in it. And I just, um, Angel flew over from London and she goes, we're, we're leaving. We are leaving because he would do things when Angel came over to do her tour. Um, he told me he didn't want to go to dinner with her and I, you guys go to dinner. The two of you go to dinner. So I do, we go to dinner near her hotel and I leave my phone in the car and I come out and there's like 55 phone calls from him. Where am I? What are you doing? Where's my dinner? All this kind of stuff. And when I finally call him, he said, I called the police and told him you were suicidal. I'm like what? You know, so then I have to deal, I had to deal with the police several times. So, and then I got fired from my job because Russ and Holly would not stop calling me, trying to convince me how fabulous this was going to be the three of us living together. And I'm like, it was, were they expecting like a polyamorous relationship or just like a co-living situation where they were in a relationship and you were their uh, Russ was caregiver? Gonna on, Russ was going to sleep on the couch. I was going to be in the bedroom and Holly was going to be in that little apartment out in the front. Yeah. Well, I can hear everything in that room. That's his office. I'm not going to do that bullshit. And he, he could not get it through his head that it was not okay. It is so inappropriate to ask you that. And the, oh, he wasn't asking me. He was telling me that's what it was going to be. And this wasn't the first girl that he had done that with. He had done it with at least two other women. Well, girl, woman. And then um, I... And she goes, well, I'll be cooking you dinner every night. I'm like, I don't, I am, I can cook for myself. I don't want you're you a great cook. I don't want you cooking me dinner. She goes, well, I'll make you salmon dinners. And I just look at Russ and I'm like, I fucking hate salmon. I don't, you know, I'm not going to have <laughs> to dictate what I'm going to eat. And, um, and he just couldn't get it through his head. And so, uh, yeah, he was getting ready to go to trans world and I got fired. And, um, I, I was just beside myself because I'm like, now what? I don't have an income. I don't have anything. And he's got all the money. I've got nine dogs and two cars that I've got to somehow get to my house in another state. And so Angel drove the car with two dogs in it. I drove the van with seven other dogs and a whole bunch of crap stuffed in it. And off we went. But he was just coming back from trans world and Holly was already in San Diego staying at a motel. And um, I'm like, we got to get out of here by five o'clock. And it was like four 30 when we took off. And um, mm -hmm. then I saw his, he left his Facebook account open and I saw that he was going to go spend the night at her motel before they had to go to the house the next day and deal with Carol. So I was just like, we're gone. We're gone. So that was yeah. that. Carol, because you were talking about um, the, the money situation. Someone had a question in the Discord. Um, how much was uh, spent on all the props throughout the years? You know, it's hard to say. It's not what he says at all. I mean, and half of this, the, the, well, not half of it, all of the stuff that he buys, he does not take care of it. Um, a lot of the props are, are broken or rusty. I mean, they sit in water all the time, but like when he drove things here and he dumped them in the yard and, you know, like frick, it's seven degrees here today with snow on the ground. And so five years of that, everything that he left outside is rusted and broken and rotted and full of rats and skunks. It, it was just somewhere I have a picture of what, what he left and the fire department down the street came graciously and hauled it all away with a loader 
down to a barn that they were going to burn and it it had to go up it was infested it had to all go wow so i would talk about a huge waste of money but did, did that I mean, not five hundred thousand dollars like he constantly says he yeah. exaggerates everything so i mean on my credit card i still have like twenty five thousand dollars worth of debt of things that i had wow. paid for on the on the hot so um I mean, even when I was there, the haunt was disgusting. I mean, there was mold everywhere, yeah. dog poop everywhere. He would make me clean up the dog poop in the rain. You like, know, that teach me a lesson. <laughs> you think, do you think he to... had one job? He had one job, and that was poop scooping, and he would not do it. And guess what? He still doesn't. He, I feel sorry for the dogs that he has now. I feel, you know, it's, it's terrible. So. Yeah. Can I mean, I sneak I one scoop, in on you guys I real quick. I'm here twice a day. Sorry, Josh. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over here. Let her. Uh, That's okay. No, I'm done. I just wanted to see if I could sneak one in real quick that I'd seen. Um, and I think it's through someone that we mutually know. It's nothing bad, but I was wondering if you uh, would want to answer a question about um, him asking for deeds to your house where you two ever pass away unexpectedly or something. Oh, yeah. When he started on his crazy campaign where he was saying that I was unstable and he was calling the police and saying I was suicidal and all this stuff, he kept asking me, are the deeds to the car in, you know, is your will up to date? Do you know where all the deeds are? Do you know where the deed is to your property? All this stuff. And then he starts this campaign of be me being mentally unstable. And I'm Angel is the one who said, fuck, Carol, he's trying to off you. And I'm like, well, no, no he's, he's trying to get me, he's trying to get me committed, is what he's so then he could have everything. So that's probably the creepiest thing I've heard all night. Yeah, well, it's all creepy. It is all creepy. Um, yeah. now, Every aspect of it is creepy. Just going back, just going back to something you touched on earlier about there being two other, you know, potential women, right? Were yeah. they? Did they ever touch? Their, did they ever arrive at the house, or was that just an no. all like? Was an no. Online? no, it was. It was all like. Uh, like one or two days into his conversations, he's like, oh, I love you. I love you. You need to come live here with, with us and I'll take care of you and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how can you tell them that you love them when you've only known them literally a matter of hours? And he says, well, I like how it sounds when I say it. Well, what does that mean? You don't really love them. I don't no, think well, that's it. We've established the, the definite incapability of. Yeah, what, I don't think that he. We I don't think that he right. ever. He ever loved me. I mean, he never bought me birthday presents or Christmas presents. I mean, he destroyed every holiday for me. Every there was always a fight where he would storm out and go to the movies. He had it was his goal to ruin anything that was special to me he would destroy it. So I don't put up a Christmas tree. I don't do Thanksgiving dinner. I don't do any of that because it's ruined. In my mind, I will never get over the shit that he did. Oh, but that's all my fault. You changed clothes. I, I'm going out afterward. <laughs> so I have to do a little costume change. I have to get a drink after this. Oh my goodness gracious. But, That's yeah, like a, I'm meeting up with friends. We're going to a drag bar, a drag club. Nice. It's like a you thing know. with us McCabe Manor folks. It's like every time we cut our cameras off and come back, we fucking look different. Yeah, <laughs> I had I just had to do a little quick change. Sorry about that. Don't worry. Um so yeah, Lindsay, is there anything else you wanna, you know, touch on with regards to Yeah, I wanted to clarify just because I mean I think in the first the interview that we did a couple of days ago, yeah. um, a lot of people were saying it sounded like I was defending my dad or like making excuses for him. And I and I touched on this a little bit yesterday when I talked to um, some of the girls here on the stream. But um, I, in no way, it, my dad's actions are inexcusable. You cannot defend any of it. What I was trying to get at was I feel like everything we were talking of everything that was being said about my dad about the manor was very one-sided and at the end of the day my dad's a human being 
who's has who's extremely sick. And I think that this top this conversation needs to be more about mental health than okay. about roasting this man who at the end of the day is an extremely tortured soul who's I mean, he doesn't go a single day of his life feeling happiness or feeling peace of mind. I and mean, he is never in a state of peace up here. I mean, he doesn't even sleep. This man doesn't sleep because of his thoughts. Um, so as, a, and I knew this as a kid, which made it really hard for me because I had so much empathy for him. I don't really know why, but even at a young age, I was just like, I mean, do you think, any chance, do you think any chance that your dad had of a normal life just vanished with his childhood traumas? I think he was sick even before all of that happened with any, any, any childhood traumas. I mean, like I, I touched on this a little bit before, but mental illness runs heavily in our family. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one of the things that even at a young age for me, why I understood him to some extent so much was because I also found issues in my mental stability at a young age, young, young age. I struggled with panic disorder and um, OCD. I no longer have OCD, I've grown out of it. Um, but I also had really bad OCD. Um, and so I remember one time he and I were at Disneyland and he, with, with Carol, and he took me aside and he, he apologized. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. He apologized and he, and he was like, uh, do you ever feel this way? We, and I, and I said, yeah, all the time. And, and we just kind of had this like, rapport like we're not that different you and me you know and we, and we just kind of we talked for a few minutes we were like in front of the um we were at a disney like the disney store in front of the disney store when you enter disneyland i remember it so vividly and he actually had a had something that he actually had a brain aneurysm when we were there too which is so crazy but right before the brain aneurysm one of the first times he ever was like i don't think i'm okay and i said i don't think you're okay either but that's okay we can figure it out and it was like, it was a sh small moment, but it was a moment. And I think that's why I, think that I was wanted a, a real moment. Like yeah. That, and we had very few of those, very yeah. few of those, but they did I, exist. I imagine they did that, exist. that would be the case. But did you, did you feel like that was a tiny sliver into almost someone trapped <laughs> within the, the rush shell that we know of? Do you think there is hope? I don't know any, I don't know anymore because a lot can change in eight years, especially when you're 60, 61 years old and you have no family and your children don't speak to you. I mean, that does a lot to someone. Uh, um, yeah, I, yeah I, I understand. And, you know, the isolation of, he's completely isolated himself. He lives in the middle of buttfuck nowhere and he has no one. And so I think the story needs to be, yes, McKamey Manor needs to be shut down. Yep. Yes, my dad is sick. No, he's not going to get help, no matter how much these random strangers on the internet ask him to, um, because we couldn't even get him to get serious help. He's not going to get help, um, unfortunately. Um, and it's a life wasted, because my dad, at some point in his life, had um, the ability to have a good life, because at some point, I mean, there was moments with my mom even, where he, my mom just said in the beginning, he was just so wonderful. Um, and even Carol says, I mean, when you, when he was younger, he had these issues, but he had so many redeemable qualities. He was charismatic. He, he, he made you feel loved, even if it wasn't necessarily anything he was doing for you. He just made you feel special. Um, and he's a talented musician. He's a singer. He's very creative. I mean, he had these redeemable qualities, but I think over the years, his mental health has declined so much that none of those exist anymore. And all he is, is this sad man, this tortured soul, and hurt people hurt people. So you can't look at him as this evil monster, even though maybe that's what he is, I don't know. But for me, all I can think of is that he's a hurt person. And I, I feel bad for him, if anything else, if anything. I don't feel bad for him. Because it's well, you choice. experienced a lot more than I did. But it's his choice to not seek help. It's his choice to blame it on everybody else. I mean, he doesn't feel good unless you feel like shit. So that's, so, he is able oh, to ahead. get help and get on medication. It's his fault that he doesn't. But his OCD makes it hard for him to be on medication. You know what? How can it be OCD 
when he's making other people do it. I mean, OCD, that's you doing something repetitively, yeah. not having somebody else. That's control. Yeah. yeah. I think what we'll do as well is all of these these mental health points, we, we really want to get some people with some expert sort of, you know, people that we can talk to that can really give us some proper insight because that, you know, what you went through with the OD, OCD, Carol, it just sounds horrendous you know when you said that <clears throat> when you freed and you came to the, the door and you realized you didn't have to walk in and out 30 times yeah it, it, none I of that can think be. about it probably I, two or three times a week i think about it when i go out that door yeah it stays with you yeah it's all shocking and it's all like i say every every time we have one of these these streams it just seems to get more deeper and the story does get sadder like it really is a sad the McKinney the Russ McKinney tale is a sad tale you know when you remove the Hollywood and you remove the haunt and the, his perception of his fame and all this stuff it is really sad and it it sucks that we couldn't or you know the, in your guys opinions that Russ will never get help serious help no, he you won't. know he will not especially when Lindsay you're saying there's been little snippets here and there of him realizing this and then just I mean they were they were few and far between but they did happen well he does have little a little insight to what he's doing because you know when he has his thoughts about whatever it is um, he, he will he will come and like wake me up and he would say, tell me this is that I'm not this way, that I don't think these thoughts, that it's not real. I mean, he knows it's not real, but he he lives in whatever's going on in his brain. I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is it's so hard to explain unless you really know him, which is why like another thing I wanted to touch on is I – feel like I was insensitive towards Holly in my last little thing with you guys. And I, I, there's, you can't disregard anybody's experience with him. I mean, every experience is, is, is your truth. And I don't think it matters how long you were in his life. If you're an abused person, you're an abused person. Um, yeah. But I do think that, she, and she touched on this yesterday. She took back a lot of what she said about my dad. I'm really glad that you've seen that actually. Like, I'm really because, Yeah. And I mean, I didn't see that. She basically apologized and said that she shouldn't have said he was a pedophile because she didn't understand she didn't understand the the depth of his mental illness and his mental problems and she had assumptions about what it could be but she didn't really understand where they were coming from and I guess she watched my video and said now I kind of more so understand where things were I still think things are weird but I, I feel like I couldn't really jump to that conclusion. But if you um, knew what those thoughts were that he has, there is nothing else that you could assume. Right. That's what, and I agree. There, I, there's no fault in her assuming that. Of course, nope. that's what you assume. There's but no if fault. when you really know him and, you're, and you really understand where this is coming from and you deal with it day in and day out, you do discover that it's all in his head. Everything, all of his bad thoughts. Let me, let me just say something, Lindsay. A lot of the time, people hear the word pedophile and they hear the words child molester in their head. Pedophile, being a pedophile <clears throat> doesn't necessarily make you a child molester, and being a pedophile doesn't necessarily mean you touch children. It means you're attracted to children, and it's not is attracted to children. In my opinion, I don't think he's attracted to children. Okay. I haven't been there in eight years. Things change. When I was a child. I had never, all I experienced was him being fearful of hurting me or doing something wrong with me. I mean, that's, I said before, my relationship with my dad was very different than the relationship my brother had with him. When, when I was born, my mom tells me that like, my, he would, my mom would, they'd be together and they'd be looking at me and I'm a baby and my dad would be like, I'm so in love with her. Is this wrong that I love her so much? Like, am I a bad person? Am I, am I going to hurt her because I love her so much? And my mom's like, no, you're a father. It, you're supposed to be in love with her. He wouldn't change my diapers. He wouldn't do anything. If he ever said, oh, I love her little feet. I just want to eat her little feet. He'd freak out. 
Because he'd be like, what does it mean that I love her little feet? That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, obviously his thoughts now that he has are not normal or don't have really any explanation. But when I was around, when I was a baby, all I experienced from him was fear of being around me. Um, fear of I, me growing I, I, up. I'm so yeah, glad I, I didn't I grow up around him. I understand what you're saying, right? Yeah. I understand that. Completely. I mean, I don't know what it would have been like if I had completely gone through puberty with him. I mean, that's a whole, I mean, I remember when I, I first started going through puberty, he was very uncomfortable. I had to start wearing bras before I even needed to wear bras. He okay. was very uncomfortable when I went through puberty. Um, I, I, I understand all of that. And I can understand how it's, it's not a nice subject, right? It's not a nice subject. And but Carol me, might I, have a different perspective. She's been there I've for dealt, longer than me. I've dealt and discussed and talked to a multitude of predators, both active, both captive and it is such a massive topic this being attracted to kids right and it's not as clean cut as people think or as simple there's so many different levels of of that topic and i think what you're saying is totally relevant from the time period that you existed with your father you know and i think carol has got real and must have relevant points. I don't know what reference to the, the thoughts. That I think that I think that we're both right. I just think it's two different time zones. Yeah. I mean, Carol's been there for the last eight years. And if you can say, yes, he's been mentally declining. I mean, I don't know. I can't touch on that. I can touch on my experience with him. Um, I what I don't think you can question um, is how I know my father. Um, mentally and emotionally, but, and how he treats people. But I don't think I can a hundred percent say um, where he is right now in his state of mind in this point of time. I, I may not be able to okay. understand that. Yeah. I don't know if anyone can, but mm. I, I know sure as hell when I was a kid, my dad really didn't want anything to do with me, but he was obsessed with my brother. They were best friends because he was a guy. My brother was a little boy. I don't think he was worried about anything with my brother. My brother they is- They played Xbox for hours every night. Yeah, I mean, they were best friends. So, I, I mean, he, my, my brother, both physically and personality is an exact copy of my father. And I think my dad loves that. My dad loves that there's this little boy who's just like me and I love him and I'm not worried I'm gonna hurt him. And then a little girl comes around and he's like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. Okay. So well it was basically Carol and my mom. And then I had sort of had a dad who would yell at me, but. Not so, really. Carol, what, what's, what's your take on those thoughts? I mean, I, I have to ask you because, you know, it was brought up again. So what is your take on Russ's thoughts that have been, you know, under the spotlight with regards to accusations that have been made, you know, or, or any of that? Do you feel there's anything that you want to touch on or would you rather not touch on? I'm not putting you I don't really want to touch on it, but. Uh, I think there's a high level of mental illness. I think okay. his, thought, okay. his thoughts are highly inappropriate regarding children. Okay. Well, we'll, leave it, we'll, 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 we can leave it at that. No one's going to jump to any conclusions because I, I mean, I'm not, an, I'm not a trained expert, but I've spent the last year with some very dark individuals. Don't, misconstrued when i say dark i mean dark individuals and there is so many there's a big line right between weird thoughts about kids right and can only get sexual gratification through the torture of a child and everything in between that there is a little type of pedophile all the way along this line there is such a massive massive problem and um, I, I, think, just, I think when Lindsay left, I, I vividly remember you were coming to our house and you jumped out of your mom's car and you just, you ran back home. You didn't want to come over. And I was relieved that you were not coming over anymore because you didn't have to go through that crap anymore. The only reason I mentioned that, Lindsay, is I just want to make sure people understand that the word pedophile does not mean somebody who has touched a child. Right. It. It's, it's, there's such, it's such a massive string. It, it can literally be as simple as thoughts 
and that's it. So I don't. Yeah. If that word gets thrown around on any platforms, just I need everyone to understand that there's a massive difference between molesting a child and having some thoughts. Right. I'm not exactly. justifying any of it. I'm not defending any of it. I'm just saying there's. A, I'm not justifying anything. I'm just talking about the realities of the topic of, you know, people that are attracted to kids. And I just wanted to touch on that so that if any other platforms start throwing that word around, I mean, I've removed uh, those words from that video. I'm going to edit the video that I put out as well because, you know, I don't think it's fair to have, you know, Holly saying these things out there when she's re when she's retracted it and all the rest. But just in case anyone does use those words, I just wanted to have it verbally said in this series that there's a big difference between thoughts and actions, and none of them are good. Right. But there's a difference. No, no none of it's good. And I'm again, no. no way am I defending or excusing anything. I'm you just know? trying to come at it from a different perspective because. Like I said, I mean, as much as I hate his guts, he's still my dad. Unfortunately, You're coming from your perspective, absolutely. And yes. that doesn't mean that I—that doesn't mean that I have any uh, love for him. There's none there. I never want to have a relationship with him ever again. Even if he did get help, I don't care. But I just have—I have to come at it from a somewhat empathetic point of view, or else I would just be furious at everything. And I, I am can't not. Do that yeah, I am. I am in no way saying any of the, any of the accusations are real. I just want to make sure people understand that there's a big difference between the two, um, and I don't think anyone. I I didn't. I, to be honest with you, you remember before we went uh, on the live the first time, Lindsay? I said to you, you know, trust me. In a couple of days, you might want to come back on because it is overwhelming, and there was a lot, you know, the first time you came on, and it's. I'm I'm really pleased that. All of you feel like you can come back and you're happy to, and things have been good after the shows. And I'm really proud of the team. So, um, yeah, just thanks again for coming back on. But uh, yeah, Josh, a quick question. Yeah, yeah, you got a quick question. That's fine. Are you okay for time, Lindsay? Yeah, I'm good. I have like um, another That's half fine. hour. That's fine. No problem. Yeah, carry on, Josh. Okay, so I got like, I guess this is kind of like two part question for you. Okay. Um, he kind of covered on a no, not her him um covered on like this different types of the p word that we were talking about that we're not going to say on here right now no um well i'm not going to say on here right now but they're like you're from the things that you've heard coming from so many different people and knowing that there is a type of that that is just not interested in a specific gender of their own spawn or their own kid period is that something that based on the things that you've heard and seen from your dad in your own time with him, is that something that you could see his mental illness devolving into? Like, could you see that or do you still, is that still just, you couldn't see it period? Um, I mean, there were so many things that I, I mean, my mom and I sat down and had a big talk about Holly's interview and Carol's interview that my mom, even who was, you know, abused by my dad was like, I can't imagine him doing any of this. He never did any of this to me. Like, and not to say it's not true. It's hundred percent. I believe everything Carol and Ollie are saying, yeah. but I think it proves to me that he has changed and gotten worse. And my mom, I mean, she's talking to me about, you know, her experiences with him. And then we're listening to what Holly has to say. And she's like, he never, he never would have put his hands on me. He would have, if, if he ever accidentally hurt me, he'd freak out. So I think his OCD was a lot worse when he was in that kind of sense with the things he was fearful of and um, him being this monster that he was always scared he was going to be. And I think maybe now, maybe he's just let it all happen. I don't know. I, I, I don't yeah, know. But, but in the beginning, he's able to hide it from anyone. Like I, right. I truly believe he advertised himself as my knight in shining armor. So and yeah, then, same with my mom. at some point, he got off that horse and rode that's, it all over me. Just so you know, that's what you call the predator and the prey. You know, yeah. they swoop in because of the vulnerability that they see in someone. They become the reason for that person's new life and the savior. And then the isolation and the mind games and the, the mental abuse begin once you're cut off. So don't like don't. I mean, feel it's like, it's cl it's classic. It's like it's classic. You know, psychological torture. Thank you. And yeah. to do that to your own children. Um, and again, I don't think he 
he did it purposefully. I think when he's fathering, he thinks that's the right thing to do at the time. He thinks he's making me stronger and less weak-minded and um, proving something. Um, I mean, he really, I don't think he really ever thought what he was doing to us was wrong. I mean, I think he knows deep down sometimes because he, ha like I said, he would have some moments of clarity, but for the most part, he really, he's not in the wrong, which is another classic sign of someone who deals with the types of things he deals with and with narcissism is just, you're never wrong. You're never at fault. Um, so to answer your question, uh, yes, it's absolutely possible. Anything's possible when you're dealing with someone who's severely mentally ill um, and who's in isolation and has no one to turn to or no one who loves him or cares for him. I mean, that's hard for anybody. Um, it's absolutely possible. All of it's possible. But once you know too much, like I knew everything about him. I mean, it's not specific to your mother. It's not specific to Holly by any means. I knew yeah. I actually knew too much and he told me that and he wanted somebody clean slate start over you know and the last words he ever said to me was you are nothing but a fucking old dried up piece of shit after 15 years that's the last thing that he said to me so on to somebody new and now he's on to somebody new and then somebody else and and they will all go through this I mean, did he even care when I left? Did, did he even give a shit? Yeah, he cared. He wanted me to make you come back. So uh, he never missed me or wanted me in his life. He, he just never, wanted someone to control. He never expressed much at all. He it was, was angry. Crazy. Angry is more like what it was. I just feel like how could you live with yourself when your children leave like, you? Like he didn't he like didn't want you in his will anymore. He didn't want Russell in his will anymore. He had everything coming to me and then I was supposed to decide what you would get. But now his sister is in that role. Joni's in that role. So he hated Joni. I'm so confused. Yeah. Yeah, like his little story that you know, his mother hated me. I maybe talked to her for two minutes in 2000 or yeah, 2004, maybe, maybe, maybe it was earlier than that. No, it's earlier than that. When I was like 24, I talked to her for like two minutes. How do you base something on that? Cause I just went there to ask where Russ was. I didn't know he was in the military and somehow he, his sister comes up with this story that his mom just kept saying how much she hated me. How can you make a judgment on two minutes? So. Did, I just want to ask something about when, when Lindsay asked about when she left and I don't really know how to put this, you know, when I I'm, I, I'm of the mindset of Lindsay, when if I was to lose any of my children, I, don't know how I would be able to go on, you know? And Russ seems to have this obsession with controlling women. He seems to have a different relationship with his, or had a different relationship with his son than you, Lindsay. Am I right in saying that? It was completely yes. different, right? Yes. Did you feel that Russ felt like he lost his daughter or did you feel that someone, i.e. Lindsay, an object controlled by Russ had removed herself and he no longer had that control on her. Was well, that thing, I, was that where yeah, the rage came from? Or was it because- It always made him upset that he didn't have complete control on Lindsay because she had her mother to fall back on, thankfully. And um, when she left, I'll just say that most of the conversations were that it was my fault that Lindsay wasn't there anymore. So he never he never accepted responsibility for anything as far as he's concerned. Never. never. It's your fault in therapy. Always. It was your Always. fault his daughter left. Yes. It was just your fault. And it's Everything. so interesting because I remember when Russell left, my dad was devastated. He was yeah. angry, but he was so hurt that he well, had, they had that big fight out in the front yard. Right. But when Russell first left, oh, I, he don't, was, I don't know. He was yeah. 
devastated. Um, and then even a few times after that, when Russell would come back and, and then he'd leave again and whatever. I mean, it was always just heartbreaking for my father, but then I leave and it's like, what you well, got more focused on being mad at me. So yeah, I think Which that's is just he... so crazy. And like, I was a good, I was dad... a good kid oh, to him. I, I really was a good daughter to him. I took care of him when he was sick. I was his nurse. I loved him unconditionally. I really did. I did everything he asked me to that was possible for me to do in the realm of the anxiety I was constantly having. I understood him and I always tried to understand him. And even now I try to understand him. So it's just so crazy to me that this man can't feel anything for me when I tried so hard to get him to. But all he wanted to do was control me. And when I was younger, I thought protect me because I mean he controlled everything I wear, everything I wore, oh, you know, yeah. everything I said, everything, my haircuts, um, my, everything was controlled. I wasn't allowed to have friends over. So no sleepovers. The only well, time I had a friend over, over, would you want them to be there? I mean, my I best friend, one of my best, there. one of my best friends came over in the seventh grade and she was like, what the fuck? She was freaked out. And my dad even manipulated her into working into the haunt. Well, she only did that like once or twice. I mean, but, but yeah, and then her parents people, said no, and her parents made her like leave. Two years later, she contacts him again and wants to be an actress again. I'm like, no. Well, she's got her own issues. She's got, you know, <laughs> we all we all have our own issues. But um, you I know, oh, man. but when the I, tea. even my friend, <laughs> even my friends, when my one friend who came over once or twice was like. This is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Like the rapport of this family is really uncomfortable. <laughs> I think I need a fucking drink. I'm going to be honest with you. I so really do, do I. I really do. do. This is like we've this got really fucking heavy really fast. <laughs> we're, I think we've reached hour eleven of this live stream saga from this week, and that's that's how long it's taken, right? On the eleventh hour now, I'm I'm never coming <laughs> back to the stream without a drink. That's how it's going now. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, this is it's it's. It's so heartbreaking. That's it in a nutshell. It has gone from being a mythological creature, right, that exists on the internet, that has fame and has this this follow, this cult style following of fans. And but you have to notice also that they're never wrong either. They, oh. They, the they believe, brainwash, Carol. The brainwash. They believe Russ one hundred percent. I mean, I get the ugliest messages from his fan base, but you know, I know my truth. I know what happened, and he. Do me a favor, away. Carol. Any time any of you get any hate, just screenshot it and send it over, and I'll just we'll just do a big shame video where we just put out a video of shame, right? So just think about that. All right, because we'll put you on blast. Don't. <laughs> well, like he's got one out there right now that's a fake profile. Josh knows about that. He's like in every group, just poo pooing me and Holly. Oh, know, we have fun with you... him big time. Uh, yeah. Does anyone, does, anyone have, does anyone have any insight on how he's reacting to all of this? Because he's been pretty quiet yeah. on social media. Hey, Lindsay, has anyone checked well, on um, him? If you get up with me, he like if you have a way. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Carol. I, I have been sending DMs, Lindsay, if that go makes ahead, any sense. Like, I've, ahead, I've offered the exact same platform uh, to your dad as I've offered to everyone else. I've contacted your dad. Uh, no, he won't come on here. I, yeah. No. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. No, he won't come on here. Impossible. You, will he? Impossible. No, he won't. No. no. <laughs> he won't. But um, I just seriously, wonder Lindsay, because if you can so contact quiet. me, Lindsay, I can give you... Mom? Is that your mum in the side chat? <laughs> Someone, there's someone mommy! Saying yeah, it's, it's my mommy. mommy. All right, so I do apologize, uh, Linda. I, I, I did oh ask. It's like a family reunion. I just I, I apologize for not acknowledging you sooner. Um, I, I, I've just seen. Sorry, I keep touching my hair. It's, just, it's, 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 it's just a random profile picture. It's like a, like a yellow cat or something like that. So I was just like, hmm. Of course it is. Sure. Could, could, could this really be Lindsay's mom? But if it is. Oh, uh, it's, I, a, it's a frog. You it's go. Frog. You get that it's, okay. it's all. It's all good. It just. It wasn't a very convincing mum image in a small circle. Yeah. Going up my, my chat fast, so I just wanted to clarify that. But hi, Linda. Welcome hi, to the side chat. Uh, 
Thank you very much for the sent over. And obviously, it goes without saying, the platform is here if you guys ever decide you want to talk about things together and, and all the rest of it. So Josh was going to say something. Yes, he was. Carry on, Josh. Oh, no, it's not even that big of a deal. I was just going to tell you, if you want to get up with me through Carol or whatever, I, I, um, I have a friend that can give you, I can tell you exactly how he's feeling right now. Um, like, and I can screenshot it and send it to you. Um, we have, I'm pretty, can I, I have direct how? contact. I'll give you uh, contact information. Yeah. Can, I, I mean, can, do I want to know? Do I want to know? I just want to know he's, he's okay. Well, he's paranoid anyways. He thinks this is always going on. I, somebody that he thinks is on his side is not on his side that has direct contact with him. Oh, God. Um, there's a nerd. We are, and I can say Jesus this out loud Christ because people. there's rules everywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah so he's not. Some I already drug have the screenshots. It's not really he's a big deal. Psycho. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can send me that screenshot. I just had a curiosity. As long as it's not, if he's it's not grotesque or disgusting if or he's anything like that. To do anything, I don't want to hear it. I don't. I don't want to. He's scared. It. Like to let me make a long story short, he's very scared, and he's in a corner, and he doesn't. He's never been in a position like this before. He doesn't, if it wasn't for corner, these people, God. he does. He's choosing to be in a corner. Okay, yeah. everyone that was previously in a corner has stepped out of the corner onto this platform and had their say. The only person that's not opened their fucking mouth is Ross McKinney. This whole fucking saga is about Ross McKinney. The damage he's done, the people that he's hurt, his mental illness, the manner, the myths, the legends, the bullshit. It's all about Russ. Okay, yep. so Russ, if you're in a corner and you're scared, you're there because you choose to be. Okay, remember that. But also, there's yes, what, what? What do we expect him to say? We're not I'm saying sorry. anything incorrect. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Carol. And that that would be a fucking start. No, okay. that will never happen. Oh, here's your hundred thousand dollars, Carol. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, that's not. Yeah. I mean, obviously, no. I'm, getting, I'm getting riled up here. I'm not meaning to direct my riledness at anybody here. I'm just, I, I just, it's understandable. I just, especially feel, as a father, I can't even imagine how frustrating this all must be. Like, as a parent, hearing of another parent being just so shitty to their kids. Like, I mean, it makes me mad. Any one, the thing is, though, any one event, any one of the million events that happened to you, Lindsay, right, is unthinkable. And the fact that there was, a fucking back catalogue of trauma is is really difficult. It's really difficult uh, to sit here, and it's amazing how st still loving you are towards your dad, and how maybe loving is not the right word. Empathetic is probably the better word, but empathetic towards your dad, and the, how much you still care. And I've said it to Carol. I've said it to you in the previous stream. Uh, survivors tend to have this way of blowing me away with their empathy, you know, and. I wish that you would get help. Reps I don't know if I would, if I, I don't, I don't know if I was, uh, if I had stayed for another eight years, like Carol would have, I don't know if I would be empathetic. I'm but not, I think because, no. I, I think, think because I left when I did and because I'm, you know, his, his blood, I'm able to sort of have empathy. But I think if I even stayed there a minute longer, I would have either killed myself or done something that I'm not going to say right now. But I was, cutting myself at eight years old. I was suicidal. I just wanted it to fucking go away. And no one understands. Nobody talks. I mean, I remember having conversations with my mom about trying to get to, to court and talk about what he was doing. And she would get emails back from her lawyers and say, there's no bruises. What are we supposed to do? He's not physically hurting her. We cannot do anything. That was the issue is that this is not something that's explainable. And when you do try to explain it, it's like, okay, your dad's a little bit of a dick, whatever. You don't understand. And no. so it's like when it's I tried so to, hard to explain, when I tried to, I tried to get out several times and I asked actors, I asked a lot of people, please help me. No one, no one did. Nobody I don't think anyone could understand it. They didn't want to get involved. They didn't believe me. I mean, so many people call me a liar. I am not lying about anything. I mean, he is dangerous. I mean, what do we gain from lying? I mean, seriously, there's no, no point. point. I mean, and this is really hard, hard to come out and say this because 
he's terrifying. You know, he's terrifying. I had to go out and purchase certain things to feel more protected. So. Yeah, I'm glad I live on the opposite end of the country. Yeah. yeah you know. I mean, like I have video cameras and I have a gun and a rifle and all tasers and everything. I have everything just because I'm scared that one of his lunatic fans will come after me too. Do you think at any point his fans will get the message? I mean, obviously no one's going to come in at this point and sit down and watch 11 hours of streams. There's a lot for people to take in. But when we come to do you know, our conclusion and our videos on this, do you think any of this will ring home with his diehard fan base? Do you think... No, I've seen some of the things they're writing. They think that uh, Holly and I are complete liars, fabricating everything just for fame. Well, I don't want to be on here. I don't want to be talking about him. I want him out of my brain. Well, what confuses me about that mindset is Lindsay, for a start, I'm sure you could have went to much... You know, you, you, I'm sure you could have went to some of the news uh, outlets that were covering your dad in the manor and told them your story you, you, you know i think it's uh, I think my I, brother and i have been reached out to i mean yeah. me me ex like very much less so than my brother because i changed my last name to separate myself from my dad but um we've been reached out by huge netflix buzzfeed like name it all yeah i mean i don't know my brother and i are, we don't know what we're gonna do but I think we've both gotten to the place where we've healed and um, I mean, we're still really mad, but my, my brother's more mad than I am. My brother's mad because my dad hurt me. That's why my brother is mad. Yeah. He like, my brother always said, he's like, if I ever see him again, I'm going to kill him just because of how he treated you. So, I mean, my brother's my best friend in the whole world. And if we ever do decide to talk about it publicly on another platform, like, I don't know, but we've had plenty of opportunities in the past and we've never felt like it was, necessary and you know for me up, up until hearing carol and holly talk about it i was like okay maybe i deserve to talk about this too and get some things off my chest yeah. you know well i think for me anyway witnessing everything play out at the very least, at least something that's come from this is the survivors of all this seem to be you know putting differences aside and coming together and you and carol have spoken so at least we're, we've, you know, something's coming from it, if that makes sense. I mean, do, do, do you think you would have, you and Carol would have spoken anytime soon if, you know, we weren't doing this series? Do you think that it's benefited up till, up to this point in any way? I think this? we've talked a couple of times or texted a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. Yeah. I, I reached out to Carol like two years ago. Yeah. Um, when she left, because I, my mom said, Carol left. And I was like, what? Like, I never expected that to happen. And I just found her on Facebook and I just said, hi, I'm so happy for you. Something yep. along those lines. And then we started and just catching from, up. I heard from your brother a few times. So, yeah. So it's just, it's small, just catching up. I mean, I think yeah. w when you've gone through something like that together, I think we'll always be somewhat in each other's lives, whether that's catching up every couple of years or whatever. But, it, I mean, and this, it's, this, like, this kind of thing really bonds what do you, you. Talk about what I mean. You reached out to me, and I, I'm really glad that you did. But I had secretly followed you because I wanted to know that you were okay, and you know all that. But what do we talk about? There's we have one thing in common. I don't want to talk well, about. That, you know. Well, I'm. I just be ca catching up about whatever our lives are doing. Yeah. You know, because it's important to talk about things other than what we went through together. Yeah, I think yeah. it's hard. As well. I understand what you're saying there, Carol. Like it's difficult to gather the the courage to to sort of take that step forward when you know you you've both come from such a massive history of control with Russ, and you know I I can understand why it would have been difficult for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um. But yeah, like I say, for me, a lot of the stuff that's coming out uh, when we started this series off. You know the the tone of it's completely changed, and the the, the sort of views on Russ McKenney have, have completely changed. And to be as weird as it sounds, like I say, I, I, 
I think this is all going to be, uh, you know, a benefit to the to the Russ McKinney story and to his community and other communities. Just hearing all of your guys' stories coming from you and laying some of these myths to rest because there was a lot of myths and a lot of people were caught up in it and it spans a long time. Um, but I don't think anyone, I don't understand how anyone could be questioning Carol's legitimacy. Like, I don't understand where that would stem from, like, uh, you know, at all. We've yeah. got literally got Russ's, you know, biological child here backing up what's been said. Like, where's where's the doubt? I don't understand. I don't understand. So. I really hope that anybody who had any doubts about any of this as understands the realities of what it's like to be trapped in an abusive relationship and the realities of growing up in an abusive family have long-term lasting effects. And, you know, moving forward in the next week, we're going to be, towards the end of next week, we're going to start looking at the main subjects that have been brought up, the mental health side of things uh, being one of them. Um, and really sort of trying to get some answers as to how how bad could it get for Russ and how, you know, what what could be the next move for him? Because I, I don't I don't know where to go unless Russ is willing to talk, you know, unless Russ comes forward and decides to say something um, because we, we're not we're not going to just, you know, you know, a couple of months from now if he thinks things are going to die down. I mean, this we're, we're going to have to stick with this until um, we get a result. I mean, McKinney Manor has to go. Russ needs to get help. I mean, that has to be the end result. Surely the manor is going to go regardless. Um, but certainly there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed, mainly, you know, issues with um, Carol's past and financial stuff and all, and all this kind of things that I think these things need to be addressed. They have to be. Because they're part of the the, the, the the story. They're loose ends, you know, to put it another way. Um, and I think this is the prime opportunity to start working on all these points. Well, now that the spotlight is back on, not just on YouTube, but in the mainstream as well. So, you know, it's it's worth it's worth trying for sure. Now Josh, have you got anything else you want to add uh, with regards to questions to Lindsay or Carol before we start heading towards that two hour that two hour mark? Oh yeah, that's right. Um so Jesus, it's already been two hours. This is wicked. It's crazy. Um, so <clears throat> my question this is generally for anybody um involved. If, if if okay, so obviously we all know Russ is not gonna get help on his own or be coerced into it. But if 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 we were to come up with enough stuff to prove that there's grounds for an arrest or at least some sort of investigation, do you think that if he were arrested or, or obviously nobody wants to see their dad arrested, not knowing for sure what's going on. But um, if he were to get arrested or in prison or whatever you want to say, do you think that that would help him in the slightest or are there any programs inside of these places that he could get? That could I mean, happen. no, but also he doesn't need to be arrested. He needs to be I was just going to say somewhere that, yeah. that's more about mental health. Yeah, even if he was to be arrested, I don't think it would it would go the mental health road if he was arrested. For yeah, sure. but I mean, yeah. no, I don't even think that would help anything, unfortunately. Well, he's also said to me that, you know, because the police came and watched footage at the house when contestants would call the, call the cops. He said, if I go to jail, I will kill myself. I will not go. And how often do contestants call the cops? Um, and what were the groans? A, an ass beating. I mean, like Laura Brotherton ended up in the ER, you know, and he says, well, she's only there because she wants drugs. She was, she was beat to a pulp. I, do you know, I actually think I seen, let me just double check that. Hang on one, one second. You know, people went to the papers and people went to the police, you know, a few times. And then, you know, people would witness the kidnappings yeah, and I ring, the doorbell rings and Russ is off doing his hunt. And I open the door and there's like 18 policemen there with guns drawn. I'm like, 
Okay. What does he say when all that happens? I mean, he doesn't he know there. that something's wrong? He wasn't there. And and then the police look at me and they're like, oh, it's you. Because they've been there so many freaking times. Yeah. You know, and then they like, took what was the police's first reaction to like, how did you guys even explain what the hell you were running out of that van when they showed up? I have pictures of the van being pulled over by the police. So, so it got to the point like, where they seen you guys on the road and knew somebody was getting beat up. Yep. That's ridiculous. Yep. And nothing was done about it, period. Nope. I mean, nope. obviously, I mean, if somebody Let signs something they think is legal, Russ? but if it's not legal, Russ can talk his way out of anything. That's what I was going to say. He, he is a master manipulator, a professional. The and police would can, come over and they'd yeah. leave his best friends. Yeah. And the same thing is happening where he is now because the police have been there and all of a sudden he's got them in his back pocket. That's bullshit. They're not doing their job. So... Well, I'm sorry both of you ladies had to go through any of that stuff. Just absolutely. In, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, someone's just asked, what did the, how did the end of, what, oh, sorry, Jesus Christ. How did the end come to San Diego? Well, he lost his ability to pay his mortgage because he got me fired. So his little cash cow and his ability to support Holly has moved to another state. He has no option but to sell that house because I was paying the mortgage, the bills. I mean, he was running up his phone bill, $500, $600. It was in, I couldn't afford to support him. Now he's bringing Holly and she's not going to work. I, I can't, I couldn't support another person. I mean, it was, it, I, even Russ by himself I couldn't support, even if he wasn't doing any of this crazy stuff because utilities and everything are are more than I make. So yeah. So he had no he had no option but to shut it down. It wasn't his choice. He he was forced out of staying in San Diego. Yeah, that's yeah, you described that well. I have to say that was uh, pretty much putting the nail on the head of how San Diego shut down um, for sure. For sure. Now, Lindsay, have you got anything else that you want to add or touch on just on, you know, the whole time period of you and Carol and Russ being together that um, you think maybe we've missed or you want to just add in before we start winding down? No, I don't think so. I think I've said my piece. Um, yeah. If anyone has, you know, hard hitting questions that they they want to know, I think more of the questions should be for Carol and yeah. Holly. I mean, I guess because they've been there for longer than I was there. But if, I mean, I can also answer questions. But um, yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna put I don't know, I think... uh, where you know if depending on who's available and who's willing to come back. Um, it would be great to have a night where people can put questions and we can dedicate some time to questions being answered. Because, like I say, the, that this two these two hours have just flown by. Um, so, so Carol, uh, the same thing to you. Is there anything else that? And again, Carol, don't feel like um, you can't come back and continue your story or anything like that. Where you know, if, you know, don't feel like uh, your your time ends here. Um, feel free to to come back and continue. Um, but is there anything else you would like to touch on just before we end this evening's show? Um, yeah. I don't think so. I mean, this is all stuff that, you know, like people are like, why haven't you come forward? This is this last two and a half years has been me trying to forget him, forget everything about him. Yeah. And it just, I mean, my entire news feed is about him. So I don't even like to go on Facebook. It's every single thing is about him. And all these people putting him on the air and stuff like that. He should not get any publicity. He should not. He is not. He is a fraud. His haunt is a fraud. There are no other locations that the newest story about Alabama being sold. That's a lie. Everything is a lie. And he shouldn't be allowed to continue the haunt. That's that I would love to see it permanently shut down and i wonder what he would do with himself if that i was just literally literally about to say what do you think would be 
the effect on Russ McKamey when the final straw is pulled? I think he would just make it again. I think he would keep doing it. I think he would just start over. I really do. I think there is nothing that will stop him from doing some sort of haunt. Well, he should go back to when it was fun. Because it was fun. In the beginning, you know, we had that huge train and all that stuff. Stories at the beginning and all those kids going through and seeing oh, them scared and all that. That was fun. But when it started ramping up, it was freaking creepy. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I just want to say... You know, thank you, Carol and Linda, for putting their their stories forward. Uh, Lindsay, sorry, and Linda in the side chat. Thank you for joining us and being so supportive of everything that's been going on with Lindsay. And I mean, things. does Linda have anything to say? Well, Linda, the door is open for you, and um, there's no pressure. And I'm sure um, Lindsay will tell you that it's you're here to tell your story. We're not trying to push anything or anything like that. So. Um, the door is always open. So, I mean, I think if I, I think if my mom ever were to come on, it would be repetitive because every single thing Carol and Holly said, for the most part, she experienced too. I mean, when she was listening to it and we were on the phone, she's like, "It's just yeah, it's all there. That's exactly what happened to me. That everything they're saying is true." So I just, yeah, I mean, for, I understand the repetitiveness of, but I just again, it goes back to survivors and not just the six-year-old. Uh, Lindsay, but the, you know, the, the woman in her thirties, who's got the six year old Lindsay, who's trying to break That's free, true. all of these little threads that make up the, the bond that, that Russ had, there is millions of people going through this and just to hear people who've been through it inspires so many. I just also a couple of super chat questions here. Uh, Kara, I could agree with you. Um, I want the fun haunt back. There you go. Um, and sending much love and support, Lindsay and Carol, both of your amazing inspiration to all of us survivors. You see the right there, that's the thing. And it's really, really important. As far as I'm concerned, the, the Russ McKinney factor of this is is really dying off for me it's the survivor story the inspiration and the moving forward how can we help people who, who've gone through what you went through because that surely if nothing else we can put down to us a, a positive spin on my mom just said um my mom said his singing used to be everything oh yep. yeah does anyone my have mom, recordings of your dad's pre pre you guys leaving from a time they're where probably all with him still? Yeah, there's but, one on YouTube of a decapitated head. If you want to check that one out, <laughs> nice. Huh. Uh, no, it, well, I, I would. Re I'm really interested in seeing and hearing and viewing Russ McKamey during his. Have I got my kids here? I've got my missus here. Surely the most stable normal portion of his life i would love I, if there's any windows into that i mean it's just i mean my mom and my, my mom and my dad met at a um single parent support group which my father would never do now yeah. he went to a single parent support group because he had a son and was a single parent he probably was doing it to pick up chicks honestly knowing my dad but the fact that he did that is my mom says, I don't know if I can relive it. Uh, that's, that's really completely sad. Understandable. Completely that's really fucking sad, mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> so sad. Um, but so he was, he's, he was a completely different person when my mom knew him. I mean, I mean when, I, when I fell in love with him, we, he would sing to me all the time. He would, he would sing to, to me too. I know. I can't even listen to yesterday. Are we talking about the same Russ McKamey here? Are we talking about the same Russ McKamey? He would come to my musicals at high school and stuff like that. And he would sing to me all the time. And w Lindsay, you, the three of us, he would be singing in the living room and he would dance with me and stuff like that. That was like the I first remember. year. That was the first year. Mm -hmm. And then it was all gone. Like, I know what Ron's Some of my favorite memories. Is I know some of my favorite memories are my dad's with, with his guitar. Um, we were at my, my mom and my dad's first apartment when they were still together and he would sing to me, he would sing yesterday and blue suede shoes and uh, walking in Memphis and all these songs. And um, he used to make me like 
CDs because he would he had a little a karaoke yeah, machine. I would, still have one of his machines. I mean, one of his CDs. <laughs> his CDs. And he I would have them. He would make me CDs of him singing songs, and yep. you know it's so funny because you'd think that now I wouldn't even be able to hear those songs like when they come on. Like yesterday is a big one that comes on a lot from, from the Beatles. But whenever I hear it, I just get the biggest smile on my face, and which is so weird. You'd think I'd be like, ah, turn it off. But I just think I'm just like thing. There were times when I was really little, when he was with my mom, things were things were okay. And um, like I think Ron can agree with this. Like we're happy we can hear this. Like this is not something that we can see no. on the on social media or anything like this about Russ because it's not what people want to hear. But it's something that Ron believes in strongly, and we need to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have no problem. Uh, you guys tell them the happy stories. If you guys want to come back on and... and there's not many of them. No, not, because after the first year that I lived with him, he would not sing in front of me anymore. But he would sing to other women, but he would not sing to me anymore. That's, that is just... I really can't wait until somebody who can explain, who's got literal bits of paper that say they understand this shit, can come and explain the mindset of Russ McKinney because... I feel like I'm losing it trying to understand all this. Like the, the the windows that Lindsay's talked about when she's had these little moments, these year long honeymoon grace periods of normality and romance and perfect manness. It's like terrible. a different person. It's like Jekyll and Hyde, as my mom yeah. always said. Yeah. Yeah, but then you know he would start messing up and revealing himself. And I'd be like, whoa, dude, no, no, no. And he would send me roses at work. And like people at work are like, why are you getting those? I'm like, you don't want to know. <laughs> you just don't even want to know. Uh, Linda, one, one thing I will say to you, if, if you don't ever want to come on the show, if you felt like you wanted to write a statement or anything like that, you, you've that options there as well. I just don't want you to feel like you have to come on here to be heard. You don't... Um, at all. In fact, we do a series uh, called the Survivor Series where survivors, you know, write out their stories and we have them voice acted and that works just as much of an inspiration. If you decided you wanted to do that, if that's too much as well, I'm not pressuring you. I'm just throwing out options. Um, just My mom know. is actually an Rip incredible writer. My mom is actually an incredible writer and I've been trying to inspire her to start writing again um, and write a book about all of this. So if anyone out there knows any publishers or anything like that, I know my no, mom's No, 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 you don't get it published, Linda. You go on Kickstarter and you get all this, the tens of thousands of people will fund this in a fucking heartbeat, okay? A massively yeah. would fund that. She's an incredible author. In incredible. Fact, even forget, if about, it's... forget about, forget even about the Russ McKinney side of it all. Just get some hype in the side chat for uh, getting Linda back on writing. You know, it, that that is something you should be looking into. For sure. And you want to be, if you know. My you, mom's life has been too much controlled by my, by Russ fucking McKamey. And it's time for her to take that shit back. Cause she's a badass. She is. And she deserves to have to, to be heard because she's never been heard in her entire life. No one listens to her and she fucking well, deserves it. Cause she we all, we all hear you, Linda. We love you, Linda. Linda, yeah. Linda. Yeah, <laughs> and, and points for Linda. And you know that doesn't end with the, these videos. You've said this again, and again, and on. But I'm just making sure you understand, Linda. We're here for you tomorrow. We're here for you in a month. We're here for you next year. We're here for you in whenever you want to do that Kickstarter. Let's do it. Get yourself some, uh, you know, some positive out of all of this craziness. Because that's yeah. really my biggest thing now is trying to figure out how to. It's these, the it's these, these women. It's Carol and it's Linda and it's Russell's mom. They deserve to to have everything in this fucking world after what they went through. Truly, yeah. they are all incredible women who, if they want to express themselves in any way in any platform, they should be able to without any fear. Um, these are just, I mean, I'm so lucky to know these incredible women. Yeah, truly. Well, thank you. Um, everyone for joining us tonight thank you to carol to to lindsay to josh to linda in the side to of course the, my trusty sidekick cap and uh 
Yeah. Everyone that's been joining us, uh, everyone that's been doing the aftercare with uh, people on the Discord, I can't thank you enough for that. And we will be continuing. Let's all just take a big breath. Yeah, <gasps> fucking hell. Do you know how many baby big Jesus. breaths I've had? Do you know how many big breaths I've had this week? I am. Let's go <laughs> take a deep breath and I'll go get ourselves a glass of wine. How about yeah, that? Right, I think we're going to need more right. than wine. I think we're past the wine. Why would you give Carol the shit box? I know, I know. It's 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 cap. It's your fault for actually ducking in and out, Josh. If I'm being honest, you you kept dropping. Uh, but it's, I can't help it. I'm very sorry. You're oh yeah, button. blame it on the new guy. Blame sure. it on the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, Dan was here. We'd be, like, we'd be blaming Dan, but Dan's not here tonight, so we can't blame. Dan. <laughs> but listen, everyone that's joined us and been following this, uh, thank you so much for the support. Um, it means a lot to me that we can do things on sex sense. Se sensitive topics like this and uh, come together as a community i know there's been differences within the mckinney manor community and i want everyone who has crushed the beef uh, to give you something out on the back because this is a much bigger story and there's devastating key players that we're obviously touching on that uh, really have shed new light on this whole situation so if anyone would like to come join oh, sorry when you go Oh, sorry. I also just want to say really quick, if yeah. anybody, if Carol, if you ever wanted to make a GoFundMe or anything to try and get some of your money back so that you can live the best possible life you can, I'm sure oh. people would be more than happy oh, to don't, donate. Don't, don't worry. There, there was a GoFundMe go to get me here. A lot of people contributed money. Rock uh, on. That's great. To, to get me here because I had nothing. I had no money. Yeah. Well, so, just, just I'm understand. grateful to everybody who helped me get here. And the, and the story, um, I have gotten dozens of messages from people who are mental abuse survivors, and I really thank them for reaching out to me and yeah. and talking to me about it. And yeah, you know, at least something positive is coming out of all of this. Well, this, is, this is what I'm saying. Let's, this is this very quickly became what I thought was going to be. Uh, a bashing of a mentally sound individual with some fucked up tendencies has turned. I mean, this whole story, the whole narrative of this has changed, you know, based on the realities that you guys have brought forward. So this is the truth about Russ McKinney. This is the reality. Everything else you're seeing going around claiming to be the truth. It's just hearsay. It's Googling. It's lazy journalism. And, you know, any other uh, people that want to run stories or anything like this, feel free to contact the admin team. I know a lot of the the people involved in this are kind of, you know, using our, our Discord as a as a. As I hear a puppies. There's Milo. Oh, is I hear puppies. Calling? She wants to cuddle, and I can't right from here. <laughs> Carol, is there any is there any charities that you are involved with with dogs that you want to plug a little bit, and we'll make sure we do that a little bit better. Well, I only do one charity and you know, that's something else we should have talked about was the, how I became operation Greyhound in El Cajon, California became my charity is I really wanted my charity to be feeding America. And I just felt really slighted by them. Um, yeah. I heard that on a live stream. That was one yeah. that's one, like, the only fact in this whole story that I can be like, Oh, I know that one. I know this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, they're a very small operation. They get overlooked because of the bigger Greyhound rescues. Okay. Um, all the bigger Greyhound rescues get dog food donations and everything. That's where the dog food thing came from. I Well, listen, when we put our videos out, um, I'll make a nice big fat advert to go at the start. Um Operation Greyhound. Operation Greyhound. Operation we Greyhound. El Cajon. Promote they rock. links and everything like that. When I come to collate this whole series and change all the thumbnails so that it says, you know, Carol's story and it makes sense when you look at it. And I do all the descriptions again. I'll put the Greyhound link and all of that as well. And the mental health stuff and ev everything will be in there. Um, but I really want to try and... If we can do some good, then great. Let's do that. Let's support the Greyhounds. You know, let's let's look into the mental health. Let's look into all of it. Let's do um, what we can to inspire people who 
who are in currently in the situation you were in to, to break free from it all. So just, just before I wrap up, has anybody else got anything else they want to touch on? I don't like feeling like I'm wrapping everybody up. So if there's anybody else you guys want to touch on, um, let me know. If not, then I'll begin my... Uh, my, my descent. My, dis my, 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 my descent into the evening. But uh, listen, thank I you. I want my Gordon Ramsay impersonation, you promised. I, I need to. I, 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 somebody, I, good, somebody paid good money for Carol to give a Gordon Ramsay impression. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you guys missed that. I'm oh, just they? saying. Did someone paid good money for Carol. Somebody paid two dollars for a Gordon Ramsay Carol, uh, um, Gordon Ramsay impression. So That's we need good that. Money. I don't know, Gordon. I tell you what, can I, I just for the sake of Gordon Ramsay meme. Just find like, a Gordon Ramsay meme. Let me do it's that. Raw. It's fucking raw. raw. You want yes. Classics? You want some classics? Oh, I can hit you with a classics, baby. I can hit you with a classic, real fucking good. Right. Let me get a packet of Cheetos. This is going to be our undercooked salmon. Okay, this is our undercooked salmon, and uh, Matty has fucked it up, right? So, <laughs> Matty, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this, Matthew? You piece of pig shit! <laughs> it's raw! It's raw is what it is! It's raw! Get out of my kitchen! Out of my kitchen! That's it. I thought you, I just made a man. <laughs> yes. That was good. Yeah. Ron, are you, in, are you in Edinburgh? Where are you? I can't tell you that for security reasons. I'm in New All Zealand. Right. <laughs> Wales. Wales. Okay, he, he's in Wales. In New Zealand. Good to know. But you're yeah. Scottish. Correct? Yeah, he's looking he's back, Welsh. looking back, smashing a packet of Cheetos across a video editing suite probably <laughs> wasn't the best thing to do. But <laughs> But at least uh, you all get a laugh. This is not going to be a thing at the end of each of these fucking yes, streams. I, I just want to say. Yes, it is. <laughs> what's, on, what's on your walls? I'm dead. Yeah, what's on your walls? Uh, oh, I'm, I make knives. And I'm a, I'm a leather worker by trade. Oh, like okay. A, I was I, like, are those guns? <laughs> no. Okay. I hate guns. Oh, shit, I hate no. guns. So I would have no. tapped out immediately. Children's artwork. There's a lot. If you, go, if you keep going further this way. It just becomes a museum of a three-year-old and a five-year-old's. That's how it should be. Oh, man. Not just, everyone has a Cap green screen. Yeah. <laughs> no, not everyone's got a YouTuber <laughs> background like Cap has. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, look at that. That's that's, that's what people want to see on YouTube. They don't want to that's see. A, that's a Twitch background right there. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. You don't, they don't want to see severed sheep head and uh, <laughs> massive amount of stabby things. So yeah, it's good times. It's good times. We're all having. Re I really wish I hadn't smashed those Cheetos. Like everywhere I move, I'm okay. All I can hear is Cheetos crushing under my arms. So, but, well, you gotta. If if there's one thing I learned from my father is you gotta you gotta go bigger, go home. Yeah, well, this go is bigger, go home. Go home. Yeah, well, listen. I'm, yeah, we'll we, if we, we just keep setting these stupid challenges, and I'll keep wrecking bags of Cheetos, and we'll 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 conquer the world one step at a time. It's it's a good, <laughs> good times. It's good times. But listen, it was worth it for seeing the smiles that put on everyone's faces. I'm quite happy to uh, facilitate the smiles. So thank you once again. Every oh, we've got doggy. We've got the dog is on. I'm making the full screen camera. Oh, puppy. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. insert I'm great oh. plug now. Oh, oh my gosh. There you go. Adorable. Yep. Um, so yeah, listen, thank you everybody um, for just the support you've shown. And please come and join us on the Discord. We're gonna I'm gonna go into a VC now for a, at least a half an hour or an hour. Anyone mm -hmm. wants to come and join us, come and do that. Any other channels, you know who you are, there's that are out in the side chat there. If you're looking for resources or sharing of anything, come and join me on the Discord and we'll just, you know, that's the best way to do this. So thank you for coming, thank you for watching, thank you for thank the support. You very much. Thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow night for what is, oh man, there's fucking Cheetos all over the world. <laughs> Make it the baby. Like all over the lighting rig here is just, it just looks like a Cheeto <laughs> bomb went off. Fuck. It's, it's not like You're one making of making you on Cheetos. Fuck. Yeah. Well, I don't know. She doesn't want Cheetos. Where came from? She I don't know. A, a total cliche of a fucking individual right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Smoking my cigarettes with my Cheetos. But listen, that's just the way we roll. But it's a mess, and I have no regrets. So thank you very Dude, much. Dude, you're like 75% American. 
listen, I'm not. I did. I I'd spent the first two years of my life growing up in Florida, so it was what? Yeah. Well, listen, that explains the Cheetos. Me. This oh is a, man! Who wants to hear about Ron? Yeah, I want to hear about Florida. That's what I want to hear about. I want to hear some stories. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we'll uh, we'll touch more on that next time. And again, everyone, the platform's open to you, Linda. Thank you for joining us in the side thank chat. You for Carol, thank yeah, you for thanks, coming. Ron. You rock. Oh, Listen, I, I just know, Carol, that you know the door is always open, and we'll touch base uh, tomorrow just to make sure everything's hunky dory. I'd quite like to send you the Discord link, and we'll talk you through all of that as well, just so you've got the support team. Uh, that's super important, and uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you all for right. good night. Everyone. We'll see you in the next one. For me, Ron Swanson, as always, be safe out there.